Welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to become a certified NASA flight controller. Once again, welcome. My name is Jenny. I just graduated from The Ohio State University with a degree in Computer Science and Engineering, with minors in Business and Korean. Now, while I was an undergrad at Ohio State, I was able to do a couple of internships here and there. I was lucky enough to be with Boeing in their St. Louis location, and then I became a NASA Johnson Space Center Pathways intern. If you want to find out more about the Pathways intern program, check out the link below. So while I was an intern with JSC, I was able to go to two different groups. I interned with the Robonaut group, and I also interned with the Cronus position in Mission Control. So why is this relevant? Who is this random girl and what is this blog about? So, more importantly, on February 9th, I became a permanent Houstonian. Though I'll always love my Buckeyes. And along with that, I became a full-time NASA civil servant and a prospective flight controller. Now, as a prospective flight controller, that means I'm under the Flight Operations Directorate here at JSC. And for me specifically, I'm under the Space Flight Systems Division. Back at, you guessed it, Cronus. Now, these first few weeks of being at NASA, I've learned a lot about my division and my directorate in general more so than just Gene Kranz and his buddies smoking cigars after Apollo 11 and Apollo 13. No, there's a lot more to mission control. Things like the vision. The Flight Operations Directorate is the premier flight operations team on and off the planet. The mission, to select and protect our astronauts and to plan, train, and fly human spaceflight and aviation missions. And then there's the foundations of flight operations. These ones are a little bit longer. So. Number one, to instill within ourselves these qualities essential to professional excellence. They are discipline, competence, confidence, responsibility, toughness, teamwork, and vigilance. Number two, to always be aware that suddenly and unexpectedly, we may find ourselves in a role where our performance has ultimate consequences. And number three, to recognize that the greatest error is not to have tried and failed, but that in the trying we do not give it our best effort. Now. Even though me and my fellow newbies might have this down pat, and I guess we have degrees, they're not just gonna send us into mission control and say, yeah, you know what? I think they're ready to fly an over $100 billion international space station. Yeah, no, that's not what happens. In fact, the full flight controller training actually takes about one and a half to two years, of which I'm just starting. So the first thing they do is they take all the new people and all the positions from mission control and throw us into boot camp, which is where we learn common content, basically things that every single flight controller should know. And then we go into command training, which is where we get certified to actually send commands to the ISS, basically to control things on board. And then after that, we all split up into our specific branches. So in my case, I'll spend the rest of my training learning more about the computers on board the ISS communicating with the ISS, and how to handle data coming down from the ISS. All of this will involve classes and exams, just like school, and a lot of simulations, where they'll throw every single bad situation they can think of at us so that we'll be ready for it real time. But you'll find out a lot more about this as the weeks go on, because what I'm planning to do is record all of this so you can come on this journey to see what it takes to be a flight controller at NASA. Along with these weekly videos, I'll be posting at this Tumblr and this Twitter with more daily updates on my training. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next week and for many more as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week.